welcome all of you. Since last uh, two or three classes, we have been discussing about carbon 13 NMR, especially in the last class, we discussed about the analysis of the carbon 13 spectra, varieties of nuclei. I also explained to you about substitution effect and how to predict the chemical shift, it is possible especially for the phenyl rings I took the example and for different places or different positions of the phenyl ring of the phenyl ring when the substitution is there its effect at the ortho meta or para position or ipso positions is already well documented. You can utilize these values from the table take benzene value as the base value and then add up all these values together whether it is add or subtract depending upon the contribution and the final chemical shift value can be predicted and we took several such examples. And afterwards we also went to the analysis of the carbon 13 spectra fairly by looking at the intensity pattern and the chemical shift positions. And we wanted to see the uh, heteronuclear coupling in carbon 13 spectrum especially when you are looking at carbon 13 directly when you are detecting carbon 13 though it is the abundant spin I mean dilute spin the question of satellite does not arise at all we are directly detecting the carbon 13 and it is coupling with abundant spins like phosphorus and fluorine we wanted to see. We took one or two examples of the molecule like peridine and we wanted to find out what is the coupling constant how we can analyze the spectrum of the carbon 13 spectrum with proton decoupling. So, that we are going to get only carbon fluorine couplings we use that and analyze that and uh, of course, CF 3 COOH is another thing which we took an example and the carbon directly attached to the fluorine was a quartet we could make out and the COH carbon also was a quartet because of two bond coupling. We knew how to analyze simple carbon 13 spectra from the information that is available from the multiplicity pattern and using chemical shift and we know how to extract the heteronuclear couplings. We can continue further now with another one or two examples before going further and now I will take the example of coupled carbon 13 spectrum of methyl trifluoroacetate in C D 3 O D and this is the carbon 13 spectrum and every peak here is genuine peak. Now, our job is to identify and make the assignment which which peak correspond to which. Of course, molecule is this one trifluoro methyl trifluoroacetate and of course, we are looking at the carbon 13 spectrum fully coupled it is not decoupled. So, that means, you have fluorine carbon coupling and also proton carbon coupling both simultaneously present that is why I took this example. So, that we should know how to interpret such spectra. Where do you start with? Of course, there is a there are there is a quartet at 0 frequency 0 ppm obviously, that was the reference we use that is TMS and TMS C A 3 D 3 protons split that carbon into a quartet that is what I told you already for different uh, carbons of having different protons attached C A 3 C H 2 C H and quarter is carbon how we get the multiplicity pattern quartet triplet doublet and singlet I discussed. Obviously, this is a TMS which is giving a quartet. What about this one? This is C D 3 part of the astronite uh, the C D 3 C O C D 3. So, that is the multiplicity pattern which you are seeing this is a solvent peak. Then what are the remaining peaks? Of course, remaining peak of you can look at it this is a C F 3 carbon and it is a long range coupling is there of, of, of not, not C F 3 carbon this is a C F 3 carbon there is a one range one bond coupling is the carbon fluorine which is quite large about 264 hertz and a large split quartet quartet coming because of three fluorine uh, atom chemically equivalent. So, this one carbon is going to be a quartet I fairly assume this is one bond carbon fluorine coupling quite large and this is C F 3 group coupling with carbon. What is the next one? If you look at the next one, you can you can start making the assignment. This is pro, this is carbon one, and I would say this is carbon three. Okay, that is carbon three is fine. Why is a quadrant? See, remember this, there is one, two, three, four bond coupling with the carb fluorine, which may not be reflected in the spectrum, which may not be there at all. So this carbon is a quadrant because of its coupling with CH three protons, three protons. As a consequence it is a quartet, but what you get here if you measure is the CH coupling here you got CF coupling. So, that is fine and if you look at the carbon 2 something interesting is happening look at the carbon 2 it is a quartet fine I can say this this could be because of the two bond fluorine coupling 
and also it could be coupling with these three protons we do not know. But I would fairly say it is 2 but if you expand this one you can see each line of the quartet is a quartet again it is quartet of quartets fantastic. So, that means this carbon is experiencing coupling with both CF, CF3 group and CF3 group. So, CF3 fluorine couples this this is a coupling because of the fluorine it is a large quartet quartet of the order of 42 hertz approximately and each line is, is a quartet because of the long range coupling with C A 3 protons that is very clearly understandable here ok we can assign make assignment of course, this is T M S this is solvent what is this last peak left over this is solvent carbon C O which is not split because of any other reason ok that is a solvent carbon and very clearly very clearly we could assign all the peaks here in a simple molecule and we could get both homonuclear coupling I mean sorry both heteronuclear coupling carbon proton and carbon fluorine here this 1 j c f this is 1 j c h this is 2 j c f plus 3 j c h is there this is 1 j c d t m s and this. So, we will go further and look at so far we saw the pass fluorine coupling what happens if there is a phosphorus present and another example of a simple molecule I am taking this is a molecule which is spectrum of diethyl diethyl ethyl phosphonate this is a molecule and now we can see there are 2 c h 3 1 2 and 3 3 c h 3 CH2 groups are present and the phosphorus is here. And if you look at the case spectrum carefully, but look at the title here, it is proton decoupled. So, there is no carbon pro proton coupling present here. If at all there is any multiplicity coming, it is because of coupling with phosphorus that we should know. Okay. So, each of them is expanded here. See, this is a doublet, this is a doublet, and this is a doublet. And of course, this is obviously three line pattern of equal intensity because of coupling with uh, deuterium, this is CD cell 3 solvent that is also clear. So, each of the 3 carbons there are 3 different carbons here and each of them is a doublet here. Of course, I have written 1, 2, 3 and 4 this also there we will see now first one is a doublet that is because of coupling with this phosphorus 1, 2, 3 bond coupling is there how okay, it is a doublet of course, phosphorus is a spin off nucleus as a consequence carbon peak is split into a doublet. Now, this is another one this is carbon 2 and of course, this is also having a uh, coupling with phosphorus 2 bond coupling. Look at this one this is the th third one which is directly bonded to phosphorus carbon 3 which is expanded here and that spl uh, splitting is quite larger you can see this is, is also a doublet very easy and last one left over if you expand this one this is carbon 4 here and thus uh, that also has 2 bond coupling with phosphorus of course, protons are decoupled. So, each peak is a doublet from the coupling strength you can also make the assignment very easily because one bond coupling is quite large this is what that one and then of course, two bond and then three bond like this we can make the assignment and you can measure the couplings also. So, you can very easily see that one bond carbon proton coupling here is about 140 hertz and of course, two bond is 7 hertz three bond is 6 hertz another two bond with the other carbon is 7 hertz. Continuing further we will take another example of uh, mol two molecules where we can extract carbon 13 and phosphorus coupling in this molecule. Again this is a proton decoupled spectrum I, I as I have been always telling you if the nucleus is put in the flower bracket that means that nucleus is decoupled with the nuclei which you are detecting. So, we are detecting carbon 13 decoupling proton obviously carbon proton couplings are not present in the spectrum. So, now we can look at it very carefully there are two molecules look at this molecule and this molecule of course, we will start with this molecule which is highlighted here and this molecule we have see 1 j coupling is there 1 j carbon phosphorus coupling it is quite large is of the order of 65 hertz approximately this corresponds to carbon 7 and of course, there is also another 1 j C B which is for carbon 2 and C both of them having one bond coupling and this is here it is of the similar order of the order of 63 64 hertz this is carbon 2 and 6 are identical. So, it is get, getting like this. Then what about this one this is a two bond coupling this is two bond coupling with carbon 4 you can see here two bond coupling and then three you can see other coupling with carbon 3 and 5 again it is two bond coupling. So, all the uh, each of the carbon P here is a doublet because of its coupling with phosphorus very easily you can assign and extract the coupling information by doing proton decoupling if there was no decoupling this would have been a very complex spectrum very difficult to extract both 
carbon proton and carbon phosphorus coupling. Now coming to this molecule again one bond coupling is of the similar order 64 hertz this is one bond coupling and then you can have another one two bond coupling another two bond three bond coupling is there, there are three different types of this thing is this one bond coupling one bond coupling and two bond and then the three bond coupling everything we can easily measure it. Okay, this is between coupling of carbon with abundant spins phosphorus and fluorine. What about coupling between carbon and low abundant spins? Carbon itself is a dilute spin. When I said I, I am detecting that we do not have to worry about it as dilute spin, we are directly detecting it. Only when it is coupled to abundant spin, we are worry about satellites. Now, we are directly detecting, but can that give satellites because of coupling to other heteronuclei which is less abundant? Of course, it can give and give rise to satellites. Let us take one or two examples of that. Look at this molecule. This is dimethyl mercury. A neat sample is taken. No, it is not dissolved in any solvent. And this is a mercury carbon 13 NMR. If you see, we have mercury. Mercury has several isotopes. Usually, mercury 199 is what we have to consider. 201 and others is not being it is very difficult to detect. So, mercury 199 is the nuclei of our choice most of the time. So, that is going to give rise to ab the abundance of approximately 17 percent and that can couple to carbon 13 and give rise to satellites. See this is the main peak coming because of the carbon attached to C A 3 and this carbon of course, we have decoupled proton is coupled coupled to mercury H E 199 and look at this this is a fairly big intensity satellite because abundance is close to 17 percent and so mercury coupling to carbon here appearing as satellites. So, measure the, measure the separation between these two satellites you are going to get one bond carbon mercury couplings which is fairly large of the order of 686 hertz. I told you in some extra, you know cases of some heteronuclei the coupling can be of the order of several hundreds even thousand hertz several thousand hertz. So, this is a large long large coupling between carbon and mercury 199. We will go to the other molecule it is a carbon 13 NM of tributyl tin iodide. Here, Tin we are is coupling tin has two isotopes interestingly tin 115 of course, 115 is also there that is very very low we can ignore it 117 and 119 are the two things which we have to consider both are interestingly spin off nuclei and abundance is almost equal 8.6 and 7.7 percent nearly equal you can say up, both of them are approximately 8 percent and in this molecule if you are looking at the carbon 13 spectrum of it look at it what is the type of spectrum we are going to get. First, of course, this is a CA3 peak, and you can as well see this is not a this one. This is a CA3 group, and there is no multiplicity being shown here. So uh, that means it is not decoupled. I mean, it is coupled. Uh, there is a multiplicity which is ex if you expand, you can see it. It is not shown here. So this is CA3 ca carbon. Very we know that one, and of course, next is this one. CH2 carbon attached to tin directly bonded to tin and this interestingly if you look at this one if you expand this CH2 carbon directly attached to tin this is expanded here. You can see two peaks on either side they are satellites of tin tin coupling to this carbon C of CH2 they are nearly of equal intensity as I said abundance is almost similar and you know the couplings are different one is tin 117 coupling to carbon other is tin 119 coupling to carbon which is which we can find out very easily that is not a difficult job thing. Now, next come to this carbon this uh, carbon is like this and it is uh, this C uh, CH2 carbon again if you see on either side you are going to see satellites okay. and there are two peaks here. So, okay, you can very clearly see and of course, this is if you go further another CH2 is there this CH2 is coupled to tin and that coupling is here and it is not very well resolved to show coupling between both the different types of tin 117 and 119 where it is clearly seen here. Can we make use of carbon 13 NMR for the structural assignment simply without using proton NMR at times very easily you can just looking at the carbon 13 NMR you can arrive at the structure of the molecule. How do we do that? Let us take the example of this molecule. This is a carbon 13 NMR proton decoupled spectrum of this molecule. There is a name for this molecule 
first we have to make the assignment of all these things. First thing the identify we have to the challenge is to identify the position of C f 3 whether C f 3 is here, here, here or here we do not know. Can we make an assignment or get the structure of the molecule based on this carbon 13 spectrum that is the challenge we have to answer ok. Of course, first assignment we know this is C d C l 3 because this C d C l 3 3 lines of equal intensity because of carbon coupling to deuterium that I have been telling you. And if you look at it this is C h 2 carbon so, it is coming at the center between 2 sulfur it is C h 2 carbon I can say fairly it is a there is no other coupling possible for this one. So, it is that one fine that is a C h 2 carbon remaining part there is this low field region is expanded here. If you carefully see a lot of information you can get out of it. If you see there is one uh, th four peaks here of intensity 1331 what is this one? This is carbon of C f 3 group carbon 13 of C f 3 group the three fluorines are splitting this carbon into quartets of intensity pattern 1331 that is what it is. So, we can make the assignment for this to the center of this quartet is the chemical sheet of C f 3 carbon. So, we can make the assignment of that ok one bond coupling is quite large also and next is there are the three other carbons C 1, C 6 and C 5 here C 1, C 6 and C 5 and all of them appear to be singlets. Of course, C 1 is a ipso quaternary carbon is very weak in intensity that we can make out from the intensity itself and C 5 and C 6 are here and they are singlets that clearly shows this long range coupling of C fluorine to these two carbons are not there that is one conclusion you can draw. But what about other carbons 2, 3 and 4 look at it this is a carbon 3 I would say which is directly attached to C f 3 group this carbon and this is also a trip quartet because of this 3 fluorine it this is a large coupling here large quartet, but this is 2 bond coupling which is quite small, but still it is a quartet and measurable quantity ok. I would fairly say that is I can make the assignment confidently as C 3 and of course, C 2 and C 4 both of them are separated by 1, 2, 3 bonds away you know 2 bonds coupling is there and they are again the quartets it each of them is expanded here you can see that it is a if you see 4 peaks here 4 peaks here 1, 3, 3, 1 quartet. So, this is 2 bond this is 3 bond C f coupling look at it 3 bond C f coupling is more or less of the order of 3 point to 3 to 4 hertz very small and it is not well resolved, but still you can make out the quartet structure in both of them. So, I can confidently say 3 bond coupling this is C 2 and C 4 which is C 2 C 4 of course, I already told you you know how to do that we can make the rough estimate of that and now this is again 2 bond coupling we can clearly say this is C 3 a sort of assignment is made. There is one, the, this clearly tells me this one C f 3 group and there are 6 carbons present in this molecule from the analysis there is one C f 3 group and there are the all these remaining 6 carbons are there and of th I 5 here and C h 2 in the previous one I showed you. What are the observations we can draw the conclusion here one the structure must be symmetrical why do I say that if the structure is not symmetrical here look at it then the C f 3 group if it is somewhere here without any symmetry then the number of carbons would have been more otherwise we would have got C f 3 2 peaks because of symmetry chemical equivalence is there and only one K, uh, K C f 3 group is observed with quartet that is fine. So, C f 3 is also not in the para position why do I say that if it was to be in the para position the symmetry would have been reduced for example, instead of here if C f 3 would have been here then what would have happened this carbon this carbon has chemical equivalence and this and this carbon has chemical equivalence then the number of carbon instead of we I said we one C f 3 and 6 carbons are there. If there was a symmetry if it was in para position we with respect to yes I am talking with respect to sulfur in which case you would have got one C f 3 and only 4 carbon peaks not 6. Very fact we are getting 6 carbon peaks one another conclusion I can draw is this this is not in the para position ok. We have drawn already 2 conclusions one there is only single C f 3 and there is a sim there is a symmetry here 
because of that we are getting single CF3 and this CF3 is also not in the para position with respect to sulphur otherwise the number of carbons what we observe would have reduced instead of 6 we would have got 4 peaks. Go further CF3 is also not in the ortho position I will say here it is also not ortho with respect to this why very easily you can come to, come to a conclusion this CF3 is coupled to this and also these two carbons if it were to be here this carbon would have coupled to fluorine otherwise the CS carbon would have been split by CF3 group into a quartet with a long range coupling but CF3 this carbon 1 is the carbon attached to S sulfur is still a singlet that means I can conclude easily say CF3 is not ortho to CS carbon so it is not para it is not ortho to CS carbon then what is the other option it must be meta to CS carbon. So, the correct structure from the carbon 13 spectrum interpretation I can draw is this one. So, that means from the simply looking at the carbon 13 spectrum number of carbons and this multiplicity pattern with of uh, for each of the carbon with coupled to fluorine I could draw a conclusion this is the structure of this molecule very easy. So, we can utilize that going further I want to tell you one uh, important experiment called depth this involves what is called a polarization transfer as I said yesterday polarization transfer I am going and uh, I am going to discuss that later because I have not discussed this polarization transfer and NOE which I introduced yesterday while doing the decoupling NOE factor I said these two terms I mentioned but not discussed in detail which I am going to do it in next class or subsequent classes. But right now understanding of that is not important, but please remember there will be a polarization transfer which means it will transfer the polarization or the magnetization from abundant spins to rare spins. When we do that what will happen the dilute spins intensity will go up signal we will enhance the signal intensity it is like robbing the rich paying the poor take the magnetization from proton and give it to carbon which is dilute spin. And now using this polarization transfer technique and also by using an experiment called depth a sequence experimental sequence called distortionless enhancement by polarization transfer using this it is possible for us to identify different carbons attached to different protons. For example, I can point out what are the carbons attached to C A 3 what are the carbons with C A 3 protons attached 2 attached one attached and quaternary carbon. So, all C A 3 C H 2 C H and quaternary carbons only 4 types of carbons would be possible they can be identified by using distortion depth distortionless enhancement polarization transfer. So, the 2 new concept I told you we will NO in polarization we will discuss in the subsequent classes. Let why we require depth what is the need of a depth look at this molecule which we discussed earlier also carbon 13 spectrum this is a coupled this is a decoupled even in the decoupled spectrum so many peaks are there what can you make out of this in the first approximation I will say this is a quartet peak this is a CA3 carbon I would say ok further I would say this is there are two doublets here then I would say this is there are these are two CHS this could be a CH which is a doublet beyond that from this region what can we say except one or two carbons here what can we say about these carbons what is the multiplicity pattern which is CH3 which is CH2 which is CH. So, it is very difficult to identify only in this molecule a couple of CH3s and couple of CH2s will be observed we can identify what about other carbons how do you identify them for that we use a pulse sequence called depth. Depth is a experiment very simple experiment what we do is we apply carbon 13 pulse 90 180 and then on the proton channel 90 180 theta pulse this is a sequence do not worry about how it works and everything because, because we have discussed this in one of the previous courses all is imp what is important is angle theta of the last pulse on the proton. In the proton there are three pulses we, will, we are worried about on the last pulse the theta degree pulse on proton and this is uh, the angle with which we are going to tilt the magnetization using this theta is called the flip angle of the pulse. This flip angle can be different we can um, keep it constant and vary it. So, what we can do is we can do the polarization transfer by transferring proton magnetization to carbon 13 and advantage is we can get the experimental time reduced by 1 over 16 very interesting. See if an experiment takes 16 hours, but
by using depth you can do the polarization transfer we can reduce it to one hour great reduction in the experimental time we can do that so how do you identify this we have to do three experiments in principle two are enough 90 and 135 but in some books and others people mention three experiments i am explaining all the three but practically you require only two experiments so in the third proto analysis there in you know, a flip angle plus theta which i showed in the pulse program we can do three experiments with keeping angle theta as 45 degree 90 degree and 135 degree three things we can three experiments we can do and the based on these three experiment the phase and the intensity of the carbon peaks vary they depend upon the flip angle of the last pulse depending upon whether you have 45 90 or 135 the phase of the pulse phase of the peak whether it is positive or negative and how this intensity whether it is zero or maximum we can define we can understand and this pulse sequence tells us based on the intensity and the phases which carbon is which whether it is ch3 ch2 ch like that this is graphically i am showing like this for example if i do a flip angle pulse with a depth depth experiment last proton pulse keeping 45 degrees remember CH, CH3 and CH2 carbons all are positive intensity. On the other hand, I do I do a depth experiment keeping flip angle exactly 90. Now you see CH and CH3 intensity goes to zero. That means carbons with odd protons attached intensity goes to zero. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, CH correct. CH3 and CH2 goes to zero. Only single proton attached carbon. 90 that will have full intensity only ch2 and ch3 goes to zero and ch carbon have full intensity go further 135 degrees you make it interestingly ch3 and ch will be positive and ch2 is be negative so all you have to do is two experiments 90 and 135 and a conventional carbon 13 spectrum you will be able to identify all the three carbons fairly easily this is the uh, table i have prepared for you This is a conventional spectrum. All carbons are positive intensity. If you do depth 45, you don't see quaternary carbon because there is no polarization transfer. There is much more directly attached carbon proton. So all others are positive. If you go to depth 90, only CH is positive. All others are zero in intensity. If you do depth 135, CH is positive, CH2 is negative, CH3 is positive. That's all we have to remember. Then do an experiment on this chiral and this cholesterol molecule. when you do that experiment this is what i showed a conventional experiment not decoupled fully coupled spectrum and this is decoupled experiment we do not know which carbon is which whether it is ch2 carbon ch3 carbon or co carbon or quaternary carbon we will see now the depth experiment of that very interestingly i do with the depth experiment this is a normal carbon 13 all are positive do depth 90 when you do depth 90 what did i say you will get only ch carbons all are ch carbons here you do depth 135 what did i say here look at in this table depth 135 if you do ch is positive ch3 is positive ch2 is negative see here here the, in the depth 135 ch and ch3 are positive and all ch2s are negative i can say in the crowded spectrum these are all ch2s and these are all ch and ch3s from the depth on that now combination of these two experiments taking the information from this this and this you can do complete assignment of all the carbons whether it's ch3 carbon ch2 carbon ch or ch carbon can be done okay so this is what it is at the expanded region of that if i show you will clearly appreciate the importance of this one look at this one here here there are two carbons one is positive another negative this must be C, this is ch2 this could be ch here look at it very close by and you will not find the difference especially here see one is positive other negative one is ch3 other could be uh, ch2 so this you will not be able to make out in the if you look at the region of chemical shape you will say it could be ch3 or it could be ch2 you do not know so only chemical shape information alone will not be able to tell you is it which carbon is this but you said in the depth experiment i am able to simply take care of this thing and i can say which are the carbons which is attached to single proton or three protons and two protons all ch2 will be negative in intensity with dipton 35 all ch and ch3 are positive intensity that's how it is 
So, then one few experimental requirements are there for depth most important is 90 degree pulse has to be perfect like this only exact 90 degree pulse only CH carbons will be seen. If it is slightly deviating let us say instead of 90 you make 90 degree 5 degree see already CH peaks appear negative CH2 peaks you can you know, start getting CH2 peaks negative which you know in principle you have to get only CH peaks on all other peaks you will go to 0 for 90, but you know other peaks start coming up it can confuse you. Secondly also you can go to this one this instead of 95 make it 85 degree is exactly 90 all other peaks would not come, but if it is more than 90 CHT peaks will be negative, but here CHT peaks will be positive for less than 90 if it is 85 degree even they are coming it will confuse you to be CH carbons. So, for precise 90 degree is very important little bit of mistuning of the 90 degree you get into problems. So, these are all CH2 carbons which appears positive. So, importance of probe tuning is very very important for depth probe has to be tuned when the samples are changed from polar to non polar etcetera. And of course, there are two types of probes in the NMR direct detection probe where 13 C coil is inside proton coil is outside indirect detection probe is there where inverse probe proton coil is inside and carbon 13 coil is outside. And so, very important for all those things. So, for a direct probe tuning is not very critical you are directly you are uh, see carbon you are seeing, but the inverse probe tuning is very critical if you do not do it properly you will make a mistake and you do de depth 90 slight variation in the angle you may get the CH2 peaks positive or negative instead of only CH peaks that get confused. So, depth experiment might fail with this thing and also one uh, one point setting of the angle is extremely important. For example, average CH point when all the experiment we take to be 150 hertz it need not be it can be more it can be less also. But if it is what happens if the CH is large very large or deviate significantly this is what happens look at it when the uh, this is the case where carbon 30 normal is there and this is a carbon 1 here. Interestingly this carbon CH coupling is very large about 240 and 250 hertz as a consequence what is going to happen this CH peak in the depth 90 we should see only its CH peak you know that is not appearing here that is what happened. If you go to depth 135 also it is missing. So, this type of errors will happen and if you go like this for example, this one this will also come this is starts appearing. So, some of these things there will be a big problem if you look at this carbon CH2 the carbon 2 look at this one this intensity. So, what is happening is mistuning of 90 degree or if the angle is or not J coupling is deviating significantly from the set value of 150 hertz there could be experimental artifacts. So, precise setting of the J value is known sometimes if the J value is different what you should do is you do 2 3 experiments ok that is what it is. So, advantage of depth over inept is inept I have not explained to you I will show you later this is APT and this is depth depth 135 depth has a lot of advantages signal intensity is much better here ok. I will uh, there are lots of things we can discuss about it depth 135 is much better than uh, APT because of the intensity there is a polarization transfer here ok. So, a APT there is no polarization transfer only depth there is a polarization transfer that is the advantage. And uh, lastly I wanted to tell you one thing about how we can utilize depth in getting the structure of some one or two molecules. So, since the time is getting up I am going to stop here we will come back and just explain that one next and then continue further with the analysis of the other spectra. So, in this class already we discussed lot of things about the analysis of the spectra carbon that is spectra how to get the heteronuclear coupling in the abundant spin is present in carbon with carbon coupling with abundant spin carbon coupling the ray spin dilute spin like selenium that we saw and many of the other examples like for example, depth experiment depth 90, 135, depth 45 how we can analyze you know in a covered region identify the carbons attached to single proton, two protons or three protons etcetera based on the intensity in the phases of the pulses. This is a depth experiment where the polarization transfer is involved as a consequence signal intensity goes up because signal intensity, intensity goes up the experimental time drastically gets reduced these are the advantages of that. In addition to identification of different carbons we can speed up the experiment and I showed the some of the examples of how we have to do the perfectly set the 90 degree for CH 
depth experiment and how missetting of the j value can give rise to problems. These are all certain tricky issues which one should remember. With this I am going to stop, I will come back and continue with the remaining part later. Thank you very much.